Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming by. Good morning. I'm here to do, well, a collective reading. I was focusing on the energy of the Pluto retrograde. Yesterday, Pluto went retrograde back into Capricorn. It's going to stay there until the end of the year and then shift into Aquarius full time come the new year. For all of this year it's been and last year, it's been kind of a push and pull between Aquarius and Capricorn in terms of where Pluto is involved. Now Pluto is a planet, is a collective planet, of course. It affects all of us. It's a very slow moving and it carries with it a lot of lessons and karma and things from the past, clearing the way for what's going forward. That's what Aquarius does. Think of the tower in tarot. That to me is very Aquarian-like energy. It's upset and change, but for the greater good. Capricorn is all about the structures we build and the rules we follow in our kind of external worldly energy. Whereas Aquarius is the change maker in the new vision. It's a combination to me of the tower and the star cards in tarot. And also we have a new moon in Gemini coming up on the 20th of, uh, 19th of, of this month. And for me, um, Gemini energy is the perpetual student, the curious one, the one with an insatiable imagination and an insatiable urge to learn. And Capricorn to me is also the natural teacher. It's the father of the zodiac. It's the hard lessons that we learn. So anyway, as I was meditating last night, I was like, can I have a message for the collective for this Pluto retrograde that's happening right now? It's like a revisiting of where our priorities lay and that sort of thing before the change happens, before we step into our new wish, our new future. I was meditating on that energy for the collective last night and you know, usually I'll get uh, guidance in the form of sentences or sometimes music, things like that, but nothing was coming. Well, immediately upon opening my eyes this morning, I got the message, the teacher appears. And I was like, okay, how does that apply? But when I think about that, the perpetual student that is Gemini, of course, Sun in Gemini right now too, and then the teacher of Pluto, visiting Capricorn. So we have the student and the teacher. So a spiritual lesson and process could be very prominent right now in the collective as well. So I'm going to get into a collective reading, you guys. This is for anybody, any sign. The whole reading doesn't have to fit for there to be messages in there for you. So if you feel compelled, then do give it a try, even if the story that comes out isn't your own. I'm going to start off with the white light oracle because I'm getting very spiritual energy off of this. The teacher appears. I have to read the definition in the book because these are very high vibrational and spiritual cards that I just am still getting myself around the energy. So let's see what's out first. And I can't pronounce them either. <laughs> Anaposis. What a gorgeous card. Look at that. I'll, I'll leave it up for a minute so you guys can really look. I have no idea what this means, but to me it looks like a heart chakra reawakening of some kind. Number four, let's see. Bear with me, you guys. I'll just read the opening uh, statement here, and we'll get an overall energy. All right. Do not give up but allow your heart to disengage from your struggles. Give yourself much needed rest. You are in a phase of recovery. If you have been off your path, you are going to come back strong. You will regain your spark of passion, inspiration, and devotion. Wow, devotion. I wonder if that has to do with that teacher message. A certain order of events needs to take place in your soul path for your soul path to come to fruition. Commit yourself to your sacred journey, trusting that the right thing will happen at the right time. Wow. Okay. So a period of resting and recovering. That could refer to that retrograding energy as well, like kind of going back through what you've learned. There we go. Anaposis. So let's start off the reading with a major. This will give us just another overall energy of what's guiding this on the spiritual level. Oh, we have the devil. This is the major arcana for Capricorn. Pluto retrograding in Capricorn right now. 
So again, a revisiting maybe of the structures and the things we set up in our life that hold us down, the things we've had to break free, uh, free of. Ooh, okay, there could be trouble with the words this morning, my friends. Oh, look what we have on the bottom, the star, Aquarius Major Arcana. So there we have that Pluto movement right there. There's the resting and recovery as Pluto retrogrades for a little while. And then in comes the future and the new wish of the star card. Ooh, my hands are shaking. Very spiritual energy, my friends. All right, let's get into a reading. I'm going to start off actually with some star codes, astro oracles. Let's get the overall astrological energy influencing whoever's resonating with this in the collective. This could be astrology present in your natal chart. It could be someone you're dealing with. Or it could just be in the overall influencing energy. Let's see what we got. We have Jupiter, Sagittarius's planet. Jupiter is about optimism and abundance and expansion and learning. There's also a curiosity associated with it. Incidentally, although Capricorn to me is the teacher of the Zodiac, Sagittarius in the ninth house is by definition where the spiritual teacher lies. So expansion. The second house, your resources, your finances, where you feel nurtured and where your sense of self comes from in that sense. Like what makes you feel stable? What nurtures you? Where do you earn your money? Where do your resources come from? So we could be experiencing an expansion in our finances during this time. Or just, you know, our overall security. We have Scorpio. Wow. Interesting. Taurus is the second house. Scorpio being the opposite sign of the eighth house. What's hidden. What's unknown. Other people's money. Death, taxes, inheritances. Things like that. But also the occult. Scorpio is an energy of investigation and psychic energy as well. So whatever you're doing here that's increasing your independence, your abundance, has to do with those spiritual concepts. Wow, we have Cancer, two water signs. Cancer is the literal immersion into your psychic emotional space. There's a real sense of being guided along here. On the bottom of the deck, we have Aquarius's ruling planet of Uranus. Change. The future. So what's opening up, you're being guided towards, and it does have to do with your abundance. Jupiter brings with it a lot of good luck and expansion and movement. So there could be, again, money coming in, but it's coming in through your intuition, like wherever you're being guided, whatever change you're being guided to make is releasing you from this energy of the devil and moving you into more abundance. Very interesting. Wow. All right. So let's take a look at the recent past here with the good tarot. I'll be clarifying as well, you guys. What happened in the recent past? The seven of swords. This guy's been showing up. I know the lighting isn't great, you guys. I'm so sorry. The, you know what? I'm going to try to turn on. Let's see if we can get the light a bit better. That didn't help at all. The seven of swords has been showing up everywhere. Not just in my readings, but all over the place. Air energy. Seven of Swords in the past has you making plans and keeping certain things to yourself in terms of how you're expanding, what you're moving towards in your future. Seven of Swords can also be an energy of keeping secrets like that. So whatever it is you're strategizing, you're kind of not telling anybody about it, which is wise, I think. All right, let's see in the present tense here what's going on. Okay. Sagittarius is major arcana of patience. Now, interesting because we have that Sag abundance right there as well. Now, patience is a, is a temperance. It's a card about being willing to work with the energies available to you now, waiting, mixing little by little this new information that's coming into your life. It's a slow integration of your expansion. It's being patient. It's happening, like keeping on the level. This could have to do with your finances. Let's see. Near future, please. Thank you. We have two. The five of pentacles and the six of swords. All right. This is literally moving away from a poverty mindset. Whatever... Um, kind of story you've been telling yourself because before the six of swords is the five of course 
whatever kind of self-doubts or fear of abundance, yes, that's a real thing. Whatever kind of fear of abundance you've been holding on to, it's time to move away. The Six of Swords is stepping out of inner conflict. And it does have to do with your abundance and your security with that Five of Pentacles. Interesting. All right. So let's see where you're going. Who is this teacher? Or what is the lesson? We got the teacher up here. What is this teacher? Okay. The Six of Pentacles, five to the Six of Pentacles, or more Earth energy. This is about obtaining a sense of balance. You also might actually, well, this is interesting. You might actually be paying out some money or somebody could be paying some to you in terms of learning something new, increasing your knowledge and your abundance. We're going to clarify that one. But what a, wherever this teacher is, it may come in the form of somebody that you, like a school, a course, a new program that you're taking, a new business you're starting with, Six of Earth, can be laying out of resources. It can be a partnership energy as well. We'll see as we clarify. The Fool and the Eight of Wands. Whoa. It's like this offer or whatever it is that you sign yourself up for or gets brought to you is then the energy opens up, the path just flies open. The Eight of Fire is about blazing a new trail. It's about overcoming obstacles to move forward. And it's fueled on by Aries energy here with the Fool. The willingness to take a leap of faith on a brand new path. Okay. So what's the challenge? What's the challenge here, please? Oh, what do we have? The Emperor and the Page of Fire. More Aries energy, but also Capricorn and Taurus with the Emperor there. With the uh, Page of Fire, it's, that's quite a different energy because the Page of Fire is youthful, optimistic, willing to engage in passion, whereas the Emperor is more held back and constrained. That's that Capricorn energy coming in. So you're holding yourself back from taking action or making a move with this page of wands in the challenges. We'll see why. And I'm going to get a potential outcome after, but look on the bottom of the deck. The Ace of Pentacles. I'm really getting an offer coming in. Are you wanting to lay out resources towards somebody or something? And that's where the path is going to open up for you. So let's see. I wonder what the... Okay. We'll clarify more on that later. The Loon, a Lunaverse deck. Beautiful. My new deck. Let's check into the Seven of Swords here in the recent past. What was this about? The Five of Cups. Water energy. Let's do one more. The Five of Cups is a sense of regret. It's loss. It's longing. It's looking back over what you, what's been spilled out. Oh, the Magician. Were you trying to manifest somebody back into your life that you were missing? With this Jupiter energy, it's like, and the Seven of Swords, you're kind of like wanting to use the universal luck to bring this back towards you, whatever this was. I don't like the Magician and the Seven of Swords, to be honest. If somebody was doing this toward you, what they're doing here is because they miss you, behind the scenes, they're using a certain strategy to pull you back in. They have an idea about what they want to grow with you. And in the recent past, that's what they were doing behind the scenes. Now, the I was about to say weaving spells, which is interesting. I'm actually not getting a literal weaving of the spells. But with the Magician and the Seven of Swords, it's pretty covert. And it has to do with this idea of longing or missing you and wanting to bring expansion into the situation. Okay. In the present, we have temperance with the two of the second house. The empress, look at this gorgeous empress card, you guys. Wow, look at this. The emperor and the empress right here. Let's get one more. Why is the empress here in the present?
this has to do with resources or creating something. The Empress, oops, the Empress is a creator. We have Libra and Taurus energy there. Taurus is the second house, which is where the Empress fell. Okay, we'll take this card. What do we have? The Devil, again. Capricorn Major Arcana. It's a card about obsession as well. So there could be fears around this situation. Man, it's really hard to tell if this is a love or financial situation. Because we do have the Five of Cups. So it's like, what is it with this devil and this empress? Some kind of obsession? There could be an obsession attached to it for sure. Because we have that Five of Cups. It's like you're mourning what you thought you manifested in. And with the devil and the empress, hmm, okay, obsession. I keep getting that. And this is like with, with temperance there, of course, it's about tempering that obsession. And with all obsessions, there's a fear base around that as well. In the present tense, you're trying to keep yourself steady. And it could have to do with this empress energy. Divine Feminine. Seven of Cups came out with that. Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. For me, very much Pisces, though, because it has that Neptune confusion with it. Oh, the Seven of Cups and the Devil. What? What is going on here? With the Empress and Patience. So what is it that you're afraid of? There's something you don't know here. There's something that isn't clear. And it's causing you to kind of fill in the blanks with that devil energy. But what you're filling it in with is obsessive thinking and doubts and fears and things like that. And this has to do with your sense of stability or offering stability. Interesting. Five of Earth, Six of Swords with Scorpio here. Five of Pentacles. So moving on from that poverty mindset or that lack mentality. Yeah, whoa, death. Another major arcana. Death and rebirth is Scorpio and it's falling under Scorpio with the Knight of Cups and the Five of Earth, Six of Swords. Yeah, that inner conflict there's so much internal struggle going on. That could be why the need for that sense of refocus and rest up there and healing with the star card. But something that hmm, you, you're obsessing about wanting to give this offer to somebody. Because the Knight of, uh, the Knight of Cups can be an apology. It can be some kind of a confession, romantic offer, something like that. But it's attached here to the Five of Pentacles. So... I see. It's like whatever offer you were contending with that came your way wasn't good enough. It came in with this Knight of Cups, which for me is very much Romeo. I don't trust the Knight of Cups most of the time. This is a person who can tell you and say anything to get to kind of just win the heart. That's the goal. There's no real plan for that Knight of Cups to do anything with that heart. It's romance for the sake of romance. Libra energy. For me, even though it's water. Okay. Anyway, this is moving on. Because there's something that you figured out. Death and Scorpio here that was being hidden from you. What is that about? Okay. Let's see. Six of Pentacles and Cancer Energy. The Eight of Cups. From the Seven to the Eight of Cups. So this Knight here could have been holding the Eighth Cup. To take you out of a place of poverty, of feeling insecure and lack and doubt and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, what is up? Okay. Eight of Cups. Why is this here? Okay. The Hierophant. Taurus. The Hierophant is also our belief systems, how we commit ourselves, the structures. We have Taurus again all over this. So Taurus energy, this could refer to that last eclipse cycle with Scorpio and Taurus as well. This could have all gone down during that time. Okay. 
But anyway, this is like the Eight of Cups and the Hierophant. This is walking towards what you believe is going to bring you your greatest emotional fulfillment, a greater sense of balance. Because all that you've been dealing with so far is Romeo energy coming your way. Death and rebirth is like understanding that that part of your process is over. What? Okay, I get it now. My goodness. What you've been manifesting in hit up till now with this with the magician and the five of cups here and, and seven of swords is like only leaving you in a place of sadness and regret the things that have come your way as i mentioned with romeo here and seven of cups with the devil has been bringing in a lot of false promises a lot of people that tell you things and offer you things where there's no real backing for it that's why it's falling here with the empress in the second house it's about, reca it's about understanding, again, where your value lies and what brings you value. This Knight of Cups and the Seven of Cups and the Devil and the Magician and all that stuff doesn't honor who you are as the Empress. The offers you've been getting are not worthy, and part of that is because you're manifesting in this Seven of Swords. Maybe not being entirely clear prior as to what it is that you do deserve. Or what it is that does make you feel like this empress. But that's over with Scorpio here. Death and rebirth and, the, and Scorpio. Moving on with the Six of Swords. It's like whatever was at unrest inside of you has now been transformed. And no longer do you need to manifest in Romeo with his Five of Pentacles. Where there is no real stability behind that. You want balance. Six of Earth here. And the Hierophant with the Eight of Cups. So you're willing to walk away from anything that doesn't yield that full potential of the Ten of Cups. There could be a divorce present here with the Six of Pentacles. You might be laying out some money to free yourself from a commitment. Because that commitment with, yeah, with the Eight of Cups, it never really got you to that place of fruition. Eight of fire and the fool. And then your path opens up. Check that out. Yeah, the eight of fire is absolutely the bursting through all the walls so that your energy can flow right into the fool. Beautiful. The sun. Look at this card. I haven't seen this card in this deck yet. It's absolutely gorgeous. Wow. Wow. Anyway, the sign I got lost in it, Leo's Major Arcana, beauty, rebirth, joy, fun, optimism, from the devil to the sun, imagine that, it's like stepping out of a dark cave into the bright sunlight of rebirth, the fool in the sun and the eight of fire, boom, once you free yourself from all of this, the Seven of Swords and the Magician so far is the key to the reading, you guys. Because Seven of Swords, you could have been fooling yourself. Again, maybe manipulating your own magic energy. Accidentally, of course. Because you were coming from a place of conflict. But that phase of your life has come to an end and it's time to step into the new path. Boom. There you go. What about this Emperor and the Challenge here? with the knight or the page of wands more fire energy a message getting something going engaging in the passion maybe what what is the challenge here with this emperor is this the teacher the nine of wands and the ten of swords wow the Nine of Wands is my one more push card. It's almost there. Eight of Wands to Nine of Wands. So after whatever money you got to lay out. Now, again, you could be studying something right here with the Hierophant and the Six of Earth. Because the Hierophant can be higher education as well. But I'm actually getting freeing yourself from something. And it's going to require that you lay out some money or some resources. And then your path forward opens up right into the rebirth. And then we have the Nine of Wands and the Two of Swords right here. With the Emperor, yeah. It's only one more step, and yet this Emperor energy is being very hesitant. 
because here comes the tenth wand with that page bringing an end to a difficult path in your life or a long uh, cycle of learning it could have been as much as 10 years two of swords is making the decision to do so picking one path or the other it's a crossroads and it might be a bit of a hold up because you're trying to get more clarity on it the emperor here wants to see very very clearly of course before making any move or any decision towards the future and it's like being perched on the precipice of the change. The fool, once you get to the Ten of Wands, the fool steps over that cliff. And I think you know that, and that's why the hesitancy here. All right, so let's see what is a potential outcome. Actually, let's go with advice first, please. No, that's too much. Let's go with advice first, please. What is the advice for whoever's resonating with this reading, please? In terms of this nine of wands, because it's about having the passion to take one more step. There's that knight of cups. Interesting. And the three of fire. So it's like, all right, let's clarify first. But the knight of cups now that was down here associated with death is back. But I think there's a new clarified vi vision, uh, too many, there's a new clarified vision associated with that. With the three of fire, it's like there's a lot more optimism in where you're coming from now. You're not now manifesting from that same place you were before. Okay, all right, that's a lot of cards, but we'll work our way through them, let's see. The nine of swords. You're overthinking, you're stressing out making this move. That's associated there with that Two of Swords. Nine of Swords is about trying to understand things and, and actions and outcomes that you can't. You can't use the mind. You can't see what's going to happen. So you're caught up devil energy twice in your own fears of the unknown. Trying to sort of guess where it's going to go if you make certain moves and it's stressing you out. The Ten of Cups. There we go. Remember I said with that Eight of Cups, having the willingness to walk away towards what you know can be fulfilling for you. Okay, so let's see these two fell out too. Let's take them. The Wheel of Fortune, Sagittarius again. This is destiny, and this was put into place back here with this magician. So the thing you've been manifesting, it looks like there's been several false starts to that. Whether it was with the same person or not, what I get is that you've been trying to sort of pull in your match, Emperor and Empress here. You've been trying to manifest, but in the past you were coming from a place of both confusion and sort of being too in control. Like what, Like you thought you had to sort of manipulate the energy is a little too strong, but with the Seven of Swords, that's a mental strategy. And that manifesting from that place is what left you in this sense of sadness and regret. But now you're coming at it, this Knight of Cups with the Three of Wands, with a whole new energy. And your outlook is much different. It's much brighter. So it's like back at it. Nine of Swords is the stress around it, though, it, that maybe you're manifesting in the same type of thing again. And then we have the Wheel of Destiny associated with it right there, which is things on the move straight into the Ace of Cups, the new beginning. So whatever it is you were, man so the lesson, the teacher that appeared, I'm going to get one more card, I get this, was this original Knight of Cups. It could have been in the form of several different people or situations you manifested in. Seven swords, seven cups, no mistake. And those were the teachers that brought the end to this lesson and your rebirth. So let's see. And there's the Ten of Fire. I was hoping we would see that. The completion, the culmination, the end of the path. Remember, Eight of Fire here, straight into the Fool. It's over. You can drop the burden now because the lesson has been learned. That was the teacher that appeared. It was your own self learning about your magic and what you manifest in, where it comes from. Ten of Wands. Six of Fire, Five of Cups. Yeah. Dropping that cycle. 
Now with this six of fire, there could have been a bit of a, hmm, okay, I'll say it delicately, a need for attention. The six of fire is Leo energy. It's about being seen, being recognized, being valued and celebrated for sure. But with the five of cups there, it's like you were not being seen, heard, valued, validated. And that was a need. And that could be why the manifesting was a bit sloppy in the past. So looking back over this cycle, what you did learn there has to do with that need to be valued and recognized for who you really are. Why is the Six of Wands here? Why is the Six of Wands here, please? This one? Okay. The Ten of Swords, two tens to close the reading, Ten of Wands, Ten of Swords. We had the Ten of Cups hiding down here too, but the Ten of Swords and the Ten of Wands work together. It, the Ten of Swords, it has to do with the stories you've been telling yourself, the inner dialogues, the difficult lessons that you've had to learn. And the Ten of Wands is the path you've been walking through those lessons. And it does have to do with your need to be seen for who you really are. And valued in that way. Let's see what's on the bottom of the deck. The Page of Cups. A message could be coming in. And it might be from this Emperor energy right here. That's currently trying, like in the Nine of Wands, trying to make a decision. Whichever side of the reading you fall on, this is a new beginning. And it has to do with that process of letting go of your own kind of viewpoints on what makes you happy that was perhaps leading your manifestations astray. With the Knight of Cups and the Six of Wands, like I said, that's a little too um, <sighs> Romeo-ish, right? Getting attention, romance for the sake of it. When I see the Knight of Cups and, and the uh, Six of Fire, it's like an infatuation junkie. That's the words I'm getting. And this is the end of that because what you've realized is that in so doing, it's only ever left you in a feeling of sadness and regret. You know, the five of cups is looking at three cups that have been spilled over. Meanwhile, two cups still remain on the path behind the back. There could have been three false starts in your manifesting that led you into this lesson. The teacher appears so that now you can manifest in with that Ace of Cups and Three of Wands what's truly going to fulfill you, what's truly going to bring about that change for your future. And it is very beautiful. Okay. Let's close it off with a few more Oracle cards from the Wisdom of the Oracle. What do we have? Chop wood. That goes for me with the patience card. Chop wood, carry water, do the hard work. Take care of yourself. Nurture yourself with the Empress through this process. Yin, divine feminine energy. Look at the receptivity in this pose. Very divine feminine. You could be dealing with your Divine Feminine. Let's get one more. Oh. Yeah, trying to stay with the Seven of Swords and the Magician in such mental control, strategizing, is not wise. The Five of Cups keeps coming up around that. The Observer. This could be you. You could be watching this other person and wanting to get things going, wanting to send messages with that Knight of Wands. Page of Wands, Page of Cups. And we have higher power on the bottom of the deck. Very spiritually guided. Now, one more to close it from the Lover's Oracle. This could come out as advice, you guys. Yeah, watching and waiting and being willing to put in the work as well. Time, you are trying too hard. Give it time. Wheel of fortune and patience. 
along with that seven of swords. Let's do another one. You don't have to work that hard. My beloved, though we may be physically apart, spiritually we are always united. For love transcends space and time. Nothing is missing. Emperor and the Empress. Wow. <laughs> that was a very deep reading, you guys. Okay. The teacher appears. The teacher looks to me like it came in the form of whichever side of the reading, all right? If you're the Empress, the teacher appeared in the form of understanding where you were manifesting from was bringing in a lack of fulfillment and sadness. If you're falling on the side of the divine masculine energy here, the emperor, then you're understanding that trying to be so strategic, magician and seven of swords with what you bring in, with what, how you approach this person, this empress energy, how you've been doing that has only led you into sadness. And this is about actually doing the hard work, being willing to come at it from a place of heart-centered optimism. And be and with chop wood, actually putting in the diligence. You've got your eye on this yin energy, whether that's divine feminine inside you or external. Whatever, you know, the empress sits in yin energy, it's receptivity, like I said. So you could have your eye on this empress or vice versa. Whew. Very powerful energy. <laughs> All right, my friends, that's what I have for you. Wow, Pluto, very strong. I knew it would be. Also, we have all that Scorpio, which Pluto is the co-ruler of Scorpio. Thank you so much, my friends. I hope this helped you. I hope you uh, resonated with this. If you did, please give the reading a thumbs up. Drop a comment if any of this uh, resonated for you. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with my words. I'll see you soon, everybody. Take care. Bye for now.